Ladies and gentlemen, Zometheus Rising has returned to the foxhole. You're listening to Sirius 106 XM 149. This is the Foxhole Network. And once again, another compelling topic. Get to your phone lines right now. 877-2-106-106. That's the number to dial. Because tonight's topic, the pros and cons of adult film star relationships and their industry's effect on ours it's gotta be hard being in a relationship with someone who's an adult film star let's look at it from their perspective let's have an empathetic heart who are they going to date and whoever they date they're dating if they're outside of their industry how do they deal with jealousy and then the flip side What about their industry's effect on us? Does porn kill our intimacy? Or is it an intimacy igniter? Somebody got to call me. 877-2106106 is the number to dial. The pros and cons, peaks and pitfalls of adult film star relationships and their industry's effect. On ours. You're listening to the voice of reason, Zoe Williams, Foxhole Radio, Sirius 106, XM 149. I'm about to take a quick break, but when I get back, we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of a deep conversation. I got guests, I got authors, I got all kind of people in the building to share and elucidate on tonight's topic. I'll see you in 2.2. Peace. Voice of reason, Foxhole Radio. You know, I get caught up in the music. Naughty by Nature, OPP 1991, don't get it twisted. Hip-hop is a beautiful thing, but tonight's topic, the pros and cons, peaks and valleys of adult film star relationships and their industry's effect on ours. I got questions. You know I come with questions every week. Can pornography rewire our brains? A lot of doctors out there feel that pornography has the same kind of effect on our brains as cocaine or heroin or any other drug that people are addicted to. What is the relationship between a porn addiction and sex addiction? Somebody call me, 877-2106106. That's the number to dial, right? Do you find uh, pornographic material over or under stimulating? Some people... You know, it doesn't really bother them. Other people, they get overly stimulated by it, right? I mean, we got people in the building. But before I get to the callers, I know you guys are ready to go. 877-2-106-106 is the number to dial. The pros and cons, peaks and pitfalls of adult film star relationships and their industry's impact on us. Do you know someone who watches porn at work every day? 877-2-106-106 is the number to dial. My question is, if porn stars, adult film stars, are tested every 30 days, does that mean that it's safer sex with a porn star than it is with the uh, regular average person? They say one in every five people walking around has herpes. One in every four, my producer says, the numbers are creeping up. So if that's the case... Are porn stars safer than the around away girl? Somebody call me. 877-2-106-106 is the number to dial. Wouldn't it be really difficult to date a porn star? I mean, how would you reconcile jealousy? I mean, by, a, you know, by, by just definition of their job, would it not mean you're in an open relationship? <laughs> 877-2-106-106 is the number to dial. 25% of all daily internet search engine requests and 35% of all downloads are for pornography. 40 million people visit porn sites every month. 75 to 85% of those are men, but recent numbers are suggesting a robust increase among women as well. What is going on? As of 2008, let's just talk about it. Search is uh, Sex is the number one search topic for the Internet. 
As of 2008, the porn industry's various means of distribution, such as TV, DVDs, the Internet, magazines, websites, books, and videos, generate more than $97 billion annually. That's an increase of over 70% from 2003 to 2007. In the U.S. alone, the porn game is bigger than the combined revenues of all professional sports franchises. NBA, NFL, baseball, all of that combined. But yet... Some porn stars, or maybe more than just some, are broke. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. We got business to take care of, and I've got people in the building who can help me take care of it. The pros and cons, peaks and valleys of porn relationships and their industry's effect on you and I. Are we in trouble because of what they do for a living? Should we deprive them of making a hard, emphasis on hard, earned living? 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. Zoe Williams, Voice of Reason, Foxhole Radio. Let's get into it. My guests in studio today are some people, and they're a couple, who have firsthand knowledge. Let me introduce... He has been seen in hundreds of films mashing balls to the wall, hardcore, punishment style, right? And I, I had to do my research. Dude is, he's packing a billy club and he's abusing people with it. And they get paid for it. Without further ado, let me introduce none other than Adult film star, rapper, right, starred in over 300 films, John E. Depth. <laughs> Depth. <laughs> Not Johnny Depp. John E. Depth. <laughs> and his girl, who is also a heavy hitter in the game. Adult film star, first female adult film star director, black. right? Black. Right? First black female. The kid in there say, you know what? You can't pound me no more. Let me get behind the camera and direct you on how to get pounded up, right? How to, how to get tenderized. None other than, well, she was born and raised in, oh, uh, how do you say it? Uh, well, Oahu, right? She was born and raised in Hawaii. None other than Diana DeVoe. This is a cold situation. Diana, Diana, it's the same thing. Everybody's like, you done said her name. Diana, Diana. Princess Deanna, Diane. Anyway, Deanna DeVoe and Johnny Depth are in the building right now. And before I move on, we have an author on the phone who has written a book called Pornland, How Porn Has Hijacked Our Sexuality. Uh, that is Mrs. Gail Dines. She's in the building right now. Gail, could you come in for a second and say hi to everybody? Is she there? Well, if she's not on right now, we can go right to Deanna DeVoe, Diana DeVoe, and Johnny Depp. You guys can say hi. Speak into the mic. You got to get close to the mic. Don't act like you're afraid of mics. So come on. Oh, <laughs> come on. What's up? What's up? I'm, I'm Thanks not, for having uh, me. Thanks for having me. Afraid of phallic things in front of my mouth. So <laughs> don't, get, don't, don't, don't get shy now. I'm going to just be Deanna for you today, right? <laughs> that's <Just> it. Deanna. <laughs> just, that's your name. Oh, man. So let's just get right into the question. Let's just get right into the meat and potatoes. Do you guys feel that pornography can be likened to an addictive kind of thing like cocaine? Or can it be something you can be addicted to? And do you know people who are addicted to it both in the industry and outside the industry? Y'all share. <laughs> you want to take that one? You want to hop on it? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I think that you can be uh, um, psychologically addicted to just about anything. Mm -hmm. I'm addicted to coffee. Um, some people <laughs> are addicted to crack. And some people are addicted to porn, um, both in and out of the industry. I know people that just live and breathe this industry and once they get in it defines them and they've had a really hard time in recent years because porn as an industry has fallen off and if you define yourself by something and then it abandons you 
I mean, it's almost like a, um, uh, a football player, a basketball player getting cut, except that you're not talking about nearly uh, as much money, prestige, fame, or security, or any of that. Wow. <laughs> but other than that, um, yeah, it would be the same. So uh, so the answer is yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, they can be addicted. Yes, um, people do use these as instructional videos, which I think... Um, is what uh, Dr. Dines may um, may want to touch on. Mm-hmm. And it has gotten more into the mainstream. It's much more um, acceptable, and it's much more accessible. Mm-hmm. So, Johnny? Oh, man, I feel the same way. It's like anything. It can, it can have an addictive nature. I think we as humans have an addictive nature. You know what I'm saying? Like you say, it can be addicted to drugs. You know, I know a lot of people are addicted to porn. they got to have their porno. It's like their morning coffee. Wow. You know, and they get out to get them going. You know what I'm saying? They had to get that one off early in the morning. Wow. <laughs> you know, but you're going to look at porn, you know. And like anything, you know, it's how you look at it. It's like with music. You know, if you if you allow the music to dictate your life, mm-hmm. so be it. So if you're going to sit there and you're going to look at a porno and you see how these guys are treating the women, you know, I know it's all the act. I know it's all performing. But if you take that home and you try to do that with your lady, you know what I mean? Maybe your lady's not ready for that. I mean, I had a, this a, a younger girl mm-hmm. ask me one time. You know, she was like, yo, my man was, he came home. He was just like trying to like beast me out. He's like on some rabid shit. Like, <laughs> and I was like, yo, well, how'd that happen? She was like, yo, he'd be looking at these pornos. And, and the <laughs> porno was telling, you know, these young cats, yo, do it like this. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you got to watch what you do, man. You know, when you're in that light, man, you got to watch your step. Wow. You know? Training the youth. Yeah, you training the youth. Wow. So, look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break. When I come back, I'm going to reintroduce our author, author of Pornland, how porn has hijacked our sexuality. Dr. Gail Dines will be on with us after we take this quick break. Once again, tonight's topic, the pros and cons, peaks and pitfalls of adult film star relationships and their industry's effect on yours and mine. Somebody call me right now, 877-2106-106. That's the number to dial. We got people to talk to you. If you're having an issue, if you're in trouble with porn addiction, or if you just like it and you want to talk to some stars that are in studio right now, you can do just that. I'll be back in two seconds. Yo, we're back. It's good to be back. I want to welcome all the new listeners who just tuned in. You're listening to The Voice of Reason with Zoe Williams, Foxhole Radio, Sirius 106, XM 149. And tonight's topic is the pros and cons, peaks and pitfalls of adult film star relationships and their industry's effect on yours and mine. Okay? Uh, The topic is crazy. We got, of course, Diana DeVoe in the building along with her dude, John E. Depth, who are two accomplished film stars. I don't don't even want to say how many films you guys have combined together it's, it's got to be over a thousand no no you was a cold piece of work i seen some of your work it's you know what i'm, I'm gonna talk to you about that bada boosha <laughs> ladies and gentlemen call in right now 877-2106-106 is the number to dial and of course on the line right now we're going to go to her author of porn land how porn has hijacked our sexuality dr gail dines miss dines could you speak on tonight's topic Well, yes, thank you for having me on. I certainly can. I think this is actually a very serious topic and not something to be joked about. When you look at what's going on in the porn industry and you look at the level of brutality and the level of cruelty in the movies today, because, you know, we're not talking about Playboy anymore. We're not talking about naked women smiling in a cornfield. We're talking about body-punishing sex. We're talking about anal, vaginal, and oral penetration. We're talking at the same time where women are being called vile, hateful names. We're talking about women women being debased, women being dehumanized. We're talking about things such as um, ATM, such as gagging with a penis. These are sex acts that are designed to debase women. Miss uh, Miss Dines, what is ATM? What was that? Well, if I can, I say this on your radio station. Yes, you can. This okay, is, it's hmm. ass to mouth, where basically a man puts his penis in a woman's anus and then, without washing, goes straight to her mouth. Oh, a dirty Sanchez. Yeah, well, whatever you want to call it. But, yeah, that's but you see, is, this right? is not this is not humorous. This is quite serious when you think first of all about the health issues, and secondly that it's a, it's designed to debase women. What's what um. 
arousal factor is there in ATM outside of the debasement of women? So I mm. think we need to really shift the conversation to talk more about what it means about gender politics. And also one of the things I study is the racism in pornography. I mean, pornography is full of images of African-American men especially, but also women, that would be absolutely not allowed on e in any other media form, but they get away with it in pornography. And this is geared towards white men. So mm. what this is doing is cementing racist stereotypes True. in the minds of white men as they masturbate. Not to mention that it cements sexist stereotypes in the minds of men as they masturbate also. True. So, these so are really wait, wait, Gail, Gail, you're on a filibuster real quick. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, this is why you're on the show. This, we want you to cover these things. And I know it comes across as humorous, but it's not. We definitely want you to come in and elucidate on your book and your perspective. So this is your time to shine. Mm -hmm. It's your platform right now to educate the millions of listeners who are listening to you bang on me right now. <laughs> but let's continue. Okay. Let's talk about some of the racist aspect. Isn't there a, 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 a series out there called Ghetto Gaggers? Yes, there's Ghetto Gaggers, which has got some of the worst forms of violence against women that I have seen in pornography. The women look absolutely dejected. They look exhausted. They look demoralized by the end of it. There's another series that's very popular called Oh No, There's a Negro in My Mother or Oh No, There's a Negro in My Daughter, which is basically black men and white women. And what they do is they basically depict black men as sexual monsters out to rape white women. Well, we know this has a long history. in this Like a Birth of the Nation exactly, film. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, if they started coming out with Birth of the Nation type movies today, there'd be an outcry. I mean, look at Don Imus. Quite rightly, he got, he got fired for what he said. But yet, you know, they call black women hoes all the time in pornography. Why is there not an outcry to that? And yet there was an outcry to Don Imus. And you're but, absolutely right. As a matter of fact, John E. Depp is here right now famous porn star he doesn't like to be called a star but he is a star johnny depp would like to respond to your statement johnny uh, i want to respond to about the racism i mean it, you're exactly right you know even if you go online and when they specify penis you know it's not big penis it's big black penis mandingo black being the operative word mm -hmm. so that's what white men have created they've created this and ask me how i know because i've worked with several directors and i've had directors tell me hey man you get a black guy big penis blah 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 and you get a little white woman there's your formula now that's a hit that's a hit you mm -hmm. know i don't make the rules you know society makes the rules and i agree with you yeah they do look at me as the animal the big beast you know let's take it back to the 30s look at king kong yeah. Wow. That's, That's basically what it is. You got mm -hmm. big you got Planet big, of the Apes. You got this big black Mandingo, you got this big black ape, and who you have? This little blonde white woman. Sure. You know? And the slave master wanna see the big black buck tear through this little white woman. You know, so you so, set this up. So let me let me do this. That's uh, that's a great point. Let me do this. Gail, are you saying that because uh, I'm taking what Johnny is saying, and he's saying this is the infrastructure, this is the power infrastructure from the top down. The powers that be, right? The powers that be, get, uh, and, and combined with Gail's information, what mm -hmm. she just said. Are you telling me that the people at the top, the white dudes at the top, are getting off on the destruction of no, poor little no, white girls? I don't hey, think. Hey man, call I, a spade I, a spade, brother. Sorry, I don't. I don't think that the. Those who are, well, the wealthy guys who are doing this are getting off on that. What they're doing, which all capitalists do, which all businessmen do, is they maximize profits. So let's think, why do white men want to watch white women being penetrated over and over again by a black male? And this is, is it penis envy? Well, no, what I think is going on, if you think that pornography is about the debasement of women, what better way in a racist society to debase a white woman in white men's eyes by having her penetrated by a black man? That's the, the, the ultimate debasement for white women in a racist mm, society. Oh, mm, okay, that's a good but, point. That's a good point. But did the black man make this? No, of course now, not. Of exactly. Course now, who who makes this? Now, the white man hired me to come to, to have sex with this white woman. Now, you know, in your right mind, and I'm and I'm I'm 39 years old. You know, 20 years ago, even maybe 25. Help me out on the math. I couldn't even look at you. Mm -hmm. You understand? And if I whistled, Emmett Till. Emmett Till. For those history buffs out there, if I whistled at you, you mean to tell me you're going to beat me and wrap a fan around my neck 
just because I whistled that. So you mean, but now it's okay. They want to see me, the big black men dingo. They want to see the big black buck, you know, have sex with a white woman. Because a lot of it is like, oh, I can't, I can't do it. So I'm going to get somebody that can do it, and I'm going to get off on it. Can I just say that this isn't just about you. This is about it's the African-American community. And mm -hmm. I would say, in a way, when you participate, what you do is mm -hmm. you make racism worse for African-Americans in general. Now, it's not just you. I want to blame the whites put, who control this. I'm putting but you're, them saying the, you're saying the people who buy into who what is being offered... Yeah. They're actually perpetuating the problem. Absolutely. And, and I'm saying to also um, your guest that when he makes this, what he's doing is he's having a profound effect on his own community. And mm. I think it's not just about you and whether you do pornography. It's about what mm -hmm. it says about your community to white racists. And that's what well, troubles me. And let me say this, too, uh, Gail Dines. Another aspect is... You know, the stereotype of sexuality for men versus the stereotype for sexuality for women. John E. Depp might be seen as somewhat of a hero because he gets to bang as many women as he wants, whereas the women are perceived as whores. I mean, I saw, I mean, doing research, of course, <laughs> I, I, I looked at one of those ghetto gaggers, and the thing that was off putting. The thing that just was like, this isn't sexy or intimate or fresh, was they're gagging the woman until she vomits. Mm -hmm. And then the white dude spits in the woman's face. Mm -hmm. Or she spits, or he spits in her mouth. And this is on top of all of the negative epithets that's being thrown at her at the same time. Exactly. And, I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, this is not, this is not like an intimacy builder. This is not yeah. romantic. This isn't. This isn't a mood starter, right? right. To add on to what, and to add on to what you're saying, like you have to understand, like every every porn person doesn't look at porn like that. Me personally, I love women. I love to see a woman orgasm. If I can make a nut, oh man, that's that makes yeah, my job and that's better. Yeah, but you fake in pornography. These are not. Hey, sweetie, I've done enough of them. And some of it, not all. Not, you know, you know what? Not all of it is fake. But you're now, paid you paid to fake arousal. That's what you get paid to do. I'd like to speak to that as somebody who Dr. Dines has, has been in the industry, both say, in front of and behind the camera. Say your name really quickly. Diana say. DeVoe. How are Diane you doing, Dr. DeVoe. Dines? I'm fine. How are you? I'm great. I'm a black woman, and I can only speak to being a black woman in America. I mean, obviously in Europe and places like that, uh, they have different um, standards of beauty. I am not the standard of beauty here. Um, I was certainly not treated as standard of beauty here. And one of the reasons why there's not this outcry is that to me, and I haven't grown up around black people, but being in, in Los Angeles, um, I've since learned that, it, you know, we have all of this, this religious uh, baggage, I'll say, that, that prevents us from speaking out against stuff like this. Because me as a black woman, I'm not supposed to be doing this. So if I'm, if I'm getting my mouth spit into, by the way, this never happened to me in the three years I was performing. But um, if I'm getting my mouth spit into, that's my fault. Because I should have my ass in church. I should not be there. And you're wrong for that. And you're wrong for that. Well, wait a minute, like Diana. Wait a minute. Diana, I, I how like do you reconcile it. that? I mean, how, how, is how, that? Do I how do you reconcile being an adult film star but yet having some kind of moral compass or religious belief. Oh, I'm not saying that I do. I'm saying that, I, in my opinion, the black community, whatever that is, because um, we can have a debate about that, <laughs> um, is, you know, this pseudo-religious, we can't do this, we can't do that, and we certainly can't have our, our women and men take their clothes off and go hump everybody in front of the camera. And if they do that, they're lost to us. And if they're mistreated, right. then that's what they're... If they're on the pole and they're mistreated, they're not supposed to be on the pole. Right. And, and Jesse you're, Jackson but you're and Al Shopton are not going to come out just because somebody called me a nigger on set. That's not going to happen. Right. But you're saying there's some personal responsibility for being involved in the first place. Oh, absolutely. Gotcha. I've known women who have taken these gigs, and I was speaking to ghetto gaggers um, uh, in particular, I haven't done it. I've, many of my friends have. Um, they fly them out to New York. They pay them very well. They treat them very well. They actually feed them so that they can puke. You know, wow. They feed them this great dinner. But why are you blaming the women for this? Why aren't you blaming I'm, the men who make it? And the I don't think I'm it? blaming the women, sweetheart. Yes, but you said something about they should take responsibility for this. Well, they do no. have some level no, of responsibility. Everyone Man has, or woman everyone should has, take This is what's wonderful about being in porn. You can, you will get a call and they'll say, hey, we want to cut off your arm in the scene. And you have a choice whether to show up or not that day. You have an absolute choice whether to do that. 
Yeah, but there's girls. Know. There's girls who only do masturbation scenes. There's yes. girls who only do with other girls. Yes, there's but girls who it's oh, complicated. Yes. You don't know what the life situation is of that woman. If she needs the money, she does have a point. I think I do more. Than, no, no, I'm <laughs> because I shoot know each hundreds of these woman. women. I shoot hundreds of these women. And so, the, for instance, um, do you know what the average price of scene is? No, Something how much like is the 800, average? isn't it? Yes, I shot a girl for $200, okay? This particular company called me one day that I worked for, that I shot for, and said, hey, we got this girl, da 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 um, she, you know, we need to shoot her right now because she's cheap, and da da because this particular company, that's what they like. They like to get over on women that way. So, can you get a location? Can you get this? Can you get that? Fine, whatever. And I go and I shoot the girl and usually when you get a girl that's that's less than the going rate, she's not, you know, you get what you pay for, if you know what I mean. This particular girl was wonderful. She did a great scene and all this and all that. And I had checked with her before and I said, are you okay with the rate? She goes, no, it's fine, it's fine. After the scene, she thanked me, thanked me, hugged me, all of this stuff because she was so happy because it was her four-year-old son's birthday and she was going to use that money to take him to Disneyland. Well, don't you think that's and sad? She was that's so not something to be happy. celebrated. That's and not she something was to so be celebrated. That that's see. sad that this woman has to put herself in that position. She didn't have and to. No, she has to earn money. She has to keep she her child She can do whatever afloat. she wants to do. No, but you can't. We've got a recession. It's very hard for women, this especially women of color, to find good jobs. So you're talking about the economic inequalities between women and men, and especially with women of color. And I think we need to talk about that if we're going to talk about why women end up in pornography. This is not about, and you must know this, this is not about women loving their bodies and women loving sex. It's much more complicated how you end up there. And I think unless we really look at the social structure that pushes certain groups into there, these are not women often who have options to do other things, to make a living in a decent way. And that's why I think it's an unfair society that we live in, and these women are paying the price for it. Gail, and, and you know what? I agree with a lot of what you're saying, but I wouldn't say that uh, this is the only way because, I mean, this is one of the ways because I don't want to go absolute here. No, of course, of course, but you don't know what the circumstances. I've interviewed many women in pornography who told me that they had to do it because of their pimps, wouldn't let them get out of it. Right, this. I right. mean, you've got, we've not even talked about the whole issue of the pimps. When I was but, at adult so, video... So, wait a minute, Gail. I mean, I, I, Gail, and, and my guest here, this is getting hot. It's getting heated. I love it. i got to take a quick break. Gail, stay with me. Because I'm coming back to you. I got some more to ask you about your book. Okay. I love your angle. I love your perspective. Please continue with this information. Don't leave me. I'm taking a break. The pros and cons, peaks and pitfalls of adult film star relationships and their industry's effect on yours and mine. Somebody call me in a minute. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. I'll be right back. Peace. Zoe Williams, Voice of Reason, Fox Hole Radio, Sirius 106 XM 149. Tonight's topic is a heated one, but what do you, I mean, what do you expect? It's the Voice of Reason, Zoe Williams, it's, it's what we do every Thursday. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. I got callers, I'm going to get to you guys. I know you guys want to chime, but this topic is crazy. The pros and cons, peaks and pitfalls of adult film star relationships and their industries affect impact on yours and mine. We're on the phone right now with porn author of Pornland, how pornography has hijacked our sexuality. Gail Dines is the author, and we also have adult film stars Diana DeVoe and John E. Depp in the building right now, and the topic is crazy. Uh, let's just go into this really quickly. The term pornography is made of two Greek words. Porno, porne being one, which means prostitute, whore, and graphy, which literally means the writings or musings or etchings or illustration, you know, of, in, you know, when you put the two words together, it's the illustration of prostitutes. But, I mean, <laughs> this is the business. This is the game. They're the small screen version, television version of whores out on the street. Now, who's the pimp in the game? Well, you talking about one of the oldest professions in the world. But who is the pimp of the porn business? Because I think you and Gail Dines <laughs> have a, a meeting ground right here because somebody is perpetuating racial stereotypes course, through these films. Uh, like you said, uh, misogynistic stereotypes through these films, hatred of women through these films, abuse of women through these films. I mean, Gail, talk yeah. to me here. What is the purpose of your book? And tell me what it illustrates as it relates to the points I just brought up. Well, the purpose of 
the book was to really raise consciousness as to what's going on in the porn industry today because many people I lecture to and I lecture across the country have got an outdated image of pornography. You know, they think of Playboy 10, 15 years ago. So I wanted to say to people that, look, this is the pornography that boys and young men are growing up with. The first age of viewing pornography is now about 11 years of age. Mm. Now, what does this mean that a boy who is still developing his sexual identity, who doesn't even own his sexuality yet, doesn't know what it looks like, his first entrance into pornography, into sexuality is pornography. You know, things like ghetto gaggers, because this is what you get when you put in porn into Google. So what I wanted to talk about was the effects on boys. I wanted to talk about what I hear from young men. We're talking about how the more pornography they use, the less ability they are to have intimate relationships with women. Mm -hmm. Some of them, for the more porn they use, the less interested they are in having sex with a woman, because mm -hmm. they feel that they've been masturbating to what I call industrial strength sex, and sex with a real human being looks very bl boring and bland mm -hmm. compared to that. Mm -hmm. Other men want to play out porn sex on their girlfriends, they nag them, they cajole them, they manipulate them into playing those things out. Other men compare themselves to the men in pornography and they haven't got Viagra fortified penises, they don't feel like they can, uh, they feel like a sexual loser. So what I wanted to do was to say that we've got to have a national discussion here about whether we want to bring up an entire generation of boys on hardcore pornography. And if we do, are we prepared for the consequences of this? Because it's going to be really difficult on our girls when they start dating these boys because I can tell you over and over again I hear from young women about how men want to play this out on their bodies. Wow, so this is what I want to do really quickly. I want to get examples from you. I want you to talk to me, uh, uh, give me some examples of what kind of imagery is out there that these young boys are now encountering and bringing into their lives as maybe this is how I engage sexually with a girl. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Johnny Depp just talked about it. He said, you know, earlier that a guy will watch a film and then go and try to per, you know, perform the same thing on his girl. So give me an example of films out there that, that you feel are the most detrimental. Okay, well let me give you what's very popular in pornography today is gagging women with a penis. Gagging them to the point that they can often vomit. Now I've just had a student of mine who was just throat raped, basically. He gagged her till she vomited and ten times she vomited and he, each time she vomited he got more and more aroused. So this is, where do you think he got the idea from to gag her? I talked about ATM, I want to talk about you know, pounding anal sex to the degree that sometimes women in pornography industry get prolapsed anuses where they have to have them sewn up again. We're talking about ejaculating on the face, ejaculating in the eye. All of these are sex acts that are designed to debase and dehumanize the woman. Can I say something, Doc? Yes, go 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 right ahead, brother. You know what? I agree with everything you just said. So I, yeah. I'm not even gonna fight you on that. But then I'm gonna but, but I'm gonna shut it down with one word. You know that the, and that word is choice. We all have it. You know, you can choose to watch. You can choose not to watch. And as, well, as far as, like, going back to, like, young boys, you know, what, what about parenting? Whatever happened, whatever, whatever happened to the parents, you know? That's up to the parents. You can't ask kids. a parent to be with a kid all the time like oh, this. You oh, cannot okay. ask a parent to breathe down a child's neck and watch them 24-7. There is some responsibility. Okay, so what's the them. answer then? So, so where do they learn? So are they going to learn in school? Are they going to well, learn in the better they learn through sex education than they learn through pornography. At least they can learn some idea of what uh, gender equality and what sexual respect looks like. Well, you think pornography teach it is a good school. place to learn? So well, let me just say this. Pornography isn't the only place where there's an imbalance between the genders. No, of course not. Absolutely not. I would totally agree with that. I mean, we live in a patriarchal society. At the end of the day, the man rules. Mm -hmm. yeah, and this is why men are violent towards that's women no, in relationships. That's no answer. That's no answer. It, it, I don't, Let me just I don't say think it's thing. an answer, but uh, if I could say one thing. It's, uh, number one is, um, uh, I want to reiterate that not only is it uh, the person's choice to view it, but it's also the, the person's choice to participate in that action. And I do also agree with everything you said. We've talked about it um, several, you know, many, many times with other people. And I believe that the industry has come to this point because the industry has, has basically lost our creativity. And it's easier to shove more dicks in a penis than it is to write something that's compelling and to act something that's compelling and to cast something that's compelling and to to ask a woman, who would you like to work with? Who would you like to have sex with? And that's what we do. 
And the reason we do that is not just because I, I feel like when I'm com- if I want to convince somebody to do something I want to do, I need to make it make sense to them economically. I've got to take morality out of it because this is a capitalist society. This isn't a moral business right here. So n- well, nothing. Sure. Th- there is no there is no morality in business. Period. I don't care wh- where mm-hmm. you're at, I Wall Street, that. whatever. Morality is there's no morality in business. BP so, oil spill. Exactly. So so the way I say it is. What and and one of the gentlemen here actually uh, reiterated this point. What is sexy about ghetto gutters? How am I going to sell and package something called crack whores? And so what I decided to do, yeah, and there is there is a yes, there there is a series called crack whores. What what makes my dick hard about crack whores? I don't understand. But yours, yeah, maybe somebody, or mine. Yeah, uh, uh, there's something else I have to tell you about. So, okay. but we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that later. I might need security. Um, anyway, back to Dr. Dines. Um, uh, thanks for bearing with me. Um, what we have decided to do was not do that. We own a company called DEF, Depth Entertainment Family. We've been uh, producing movies for about eight years now, and we do focus on the female orgasm. So and let me ask you this. Let choice. me ask you this for Gail Dines. Are you guys producing adult films that have intimacy building practices in them? Or is this just I, because, you know, that's what they say about porn. And, mm-hmm. and you can and you can help me here, Gail, if, if you want to. You can jump in. They say that porn lacks intimacy. Mm-hmm. That's why there are no real, you know, um, there's, uh, right, plots. There's no real orgasm. It's just, hey, yeah. we met each other. You're naked. I'm banging. Right. I squirt off. We're I done. Know her as well. Remember the names they call her slut, cum right. dumpster. How do you do exactly. that? Exactly. We don't. We don't. We don't do name. that. We don't do that because I think it's stupid and I don't think it's sexy. But you I know think what at I'm the end getting, of the day, you, I would. I wouldn't mind a 13 year old watching if they had to watch 13, something. Wait, hold if on. they had to watch something, if they're getting on the internet and watching something, which we know that they are. I would, you know, I would rather them watch something like what we have produced. Oh, than I see Ghetto what you're Gattles. saying. If they stumble into somebody's stash, yeah, right. stumble into uncle's stash or daddy's stash of porn, that they find mm-hmm. some and, and talking instructional about, porn. Right. And talking Can about I just it. say one? I want to say though, I don't believe in. Hello. Yes. I don't believe in capitulating to the porn industry. I think what I'm hearing you saying, look, is terrible, is capitalist, there's nothing you can do, and I don't believe that. No, it I is- think we said that there is something we can do, and we've, we've done it. Well, I don't believe that's doing it. So I, what's think, your I think that's buying into the same ideology as pornography. I don't see that as any different, I have to tell you. Because what you're doing is you're still creating a product for mainly men, a consumer product to mainly Have you watched men. it? Well, you know what? A lot of. Listen, she's right. 75 to 85 percent of people who involve or are involved in porn is, is dudes. Run mm-hmm. the it's guys. It's, but porn my, for women doesn't sell. But let me just say this: my question to to to, to Gail Dines here is, wh- people are telling me that you seem a little more biased to the porn experience as it relates to men. Uh, my question to the actors here: Do you guys have films that show women whooping men's ass? And being, you know, abusive to, to men. Well, I don't have any films of that nature, but my style are of they, sex. Are they out there? Yes. Yeah, they're out there, but my, Absolutely. my my type of sex, and I have a lot of female fans. And I have females that would hit me on a Facebook or come up to me in the street and was like, man, I like the way you perform your act. Because, you know, you take your time with the girl and she's not like a piece of meat. You know, I've seen girls, man, just dog the girl, you know, right. but, you know. And, it, and, you know, and, and to go back to the race card, you know, it'll be the other half, you know, playing them dirty, but they won't do interracial with me. Okay, so this is what I want to do right now. Uh, so, Miss, Miss Gail Dines, this is what I want to do. Could you, do you have a website? And I want people to go out and buy her book. I have her book right here, How Porn Hijacks Our Sexuality by Gail Dines. And I think it's an excellent book. Um, where can they find you? Do you have a website? Yes, Do you it's, have? it's Gail Dines, G-A-I-L-D-I-N-E-S dot com. So they can go on my website. I've got my articles up there. I've got a whole biography, a bibliography, so people can get more information. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I have one more thing to ask you real quick before I wrap. Just give me quickly three ways that adult films can hinder our relationships. Okay, they give unrealistic expectations of how men perform sex. They give unrealistic expectations of how women perform sex. And they have absolutely no intimacy. It's based on just what we call hookup sex. And it destroys the ability for women and men to develop close, intimate, connected relationships. 
Wow. I appreciate your call. I appreciate you. Thank you for coming on Thank The Voice of Reason. Much. Thanks for being the somber voice here today, and uh, we hope to have you back at some point. Right. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Now, Gail is gone. She was a very powerful guest. We're about to take another quick break. The pros and cons, peaks and pitfalls of adult film star relationships and their industry's effect on yours and mine. Call me back. I got callers on the line. I'm getting to you right now. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. Zoe Williams, Voice of Reason, Foxhole Radio. I'll be back in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, Zoe Williams, the Voice of Reason has returned. Tonight's topic is absolutely on fire Get to your phone lines right now. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. That is your personal hotline. Trust me, I will get to you right now. We're going to callers. Tonight's topic, the pros and cons, peaks and pitfalls of adult film star relationships and their industry's effect on yours and mine. Chris, Utah, you're in the voice of reason. Let's talk about it. Yeah, I just want to say, I'm, uh, first off, um, I'm glad that you, uh, that you threw out the, the definition of what pornography is. Cause, mm. And... In my eyes, it's more of a documentation or documentary than anything else. Mm -hmm. When Gail was talking about how, um, you know, it's uh, showing guys being domineering, and especially when it came to uh, the big black penises, I mean, and showing, you know, white guys, I mean, I'm a white guy myself, and showing us that, you know, give, trying to say that it gives us a perspective. I can't go to any white person and be like, hey, you know, uh, what kind of porn turns you on, you know, big black penises to any guy and I mean <laughs> freak out would be like, No man, like what what the hell are you talking about? We go up to any girl and be like, Hey, you know, is this turn your arm and uh any white girl and they'll be like, Yeah, you know, I mean it's kinda hot and I think a lot of what the porn industry feeds on is uh their current fetishes. Right. Right. You know That's I mean? a good point. That's a good point, man. Thank you for the call, brother. Appreciate you. Black ass Kenny from Memphis. Talk about this topic, man. Hey, what up, Zoe? Look, I got a quick question, man. Cause I used to watch porn a lot when in like in my early twenties, mm -hmm. but now I, it's it's so it's, it's changed so much, man. Because it's borderline funny slash disturbing. Because mm -hmm. it's to the point to where you got folks on there shitting and pissing on each other. Right. And I'm trying to figure out like what part of the game is, is that? <laughs> how is that sexually, you know, intriguing? Because it's like the porn stars who do that, are they really into that? Or is it more of a situation where the producer's like, yo, I throw you a couple of extra stacks if you let this guy shit on you? Hey, yeah, hey, hey, hey Johnny, yeah, Johnny yeah, Depp yeah, is yeah. here right now. Deanna DeVoe, yeah. answer his question. Peace, peace, peace. Uh, man, look, I tell you like this. <laughs> First of all, we agree with everything you're I agree with everything that you're saying. <laughs> I agree with everything that you're saying. And you know what? And I don't think no amount of money. I think, think a lot of cats just be in the crazy shit like that, man. You know, a lot of cats' fetishes, man, just be off the chain, man, off the meter, man. They're all type, They like all types of stuff, man. So I don't even think it's about the money sometimes, man. But I do want to say that, that knowing the porn industry like I do, Thank I, you, think, Kenny. I think you guys give us way too much credit. Um, we make the trends fortunately unfortunately however you want to say we don't do any market research you've never saw you never seen somebody on the corner you know saying hey what kind of soda do you like oh by the way what kind of pornography do you like you've never seen that we have no idea what america what the world wants to see and so we make it in the san fernando valley generally and we put it out there and we stuff the shelves and you guys say well hey this okay i guess i i like this now and it's unfortunate we are imprinting uh so yeah give it about 10 years and and you'll like shit and piss too <laughs> Wow. Hey, listen, call me right now. You want to talk to Johnny Depp and Deanna DeVoe, Diana DeVoe? Now's the time to do it. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. We're talking about the pros and cons, peaks and pitfalls of adult film star relationships and their industry's effect on yours and mine. Somebody call me right now. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. Mark, North Carolina, let me talk to you, Mac. Hey, so. uh, that's Mac. I'm sorry, Mac from North Carolina. What's up, brother? No, you good, you good. I knew what you meant. Okay. Anyway, really want to say real quick, I think Dr. Bonds was being a little bit of a hater because she was putting a lot of fingers at the porn industry. But, I, you know, I watch porn from time to time. I watch some of the stuff, some of the stuff I don't watch. If I ain't into it, I don't watch it. The porn industry is like any other industry. There, there's a market for it. If there wasn't a market for it, they couldn't sell it. Unfortunately, there's a market for people pissing and shitting on each other or people gagging each other because if there wasn't, 
they wouldn't sell it. And if they weren't selling it, they would stop making it because it wouldn't be profitable. It's but just, just like, because there's a market, it doesn't necessarily mean that's something good for us. There's a market for crack. There's a market for heroin. There's a market for a whole bunch of stupid stuff. Right, exactly. There's a market for pedophilia. I mean, just because there's a market, it doesn't validate its existence. Mm. There's a market for 50 cents records. Wow. Let's keep wow. going. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. Zoe Williams, Voice of Reason, Foxhole Radio, the pros and cons, pits and or peaks and pitfalls of adult film star relationships and their industry's effect on yours and mine. Somebody call me right now. 877-2106-106. That's the number to dial. Heard from Los Angeles. I heard you wanted to say something. Let's talk. Yeah, um, I was just going some going off of what Deanna was talking about earlier uh, on kind of Gail, they had earlier they were talking, they were discussing about kind of the pros and cons about why women can't be in, kind of involved or, or be sexually active and then that the one, the, her one, Deanna's one story about a, a young lady who needed $200 and they had to pay cheaper things and then they were talking about more compass of that. Um, and I think uh, Diana or Deanna hit around the nose when she was talking about there is no morality in business. And the concept of it is that pornography is a business, and the thing is, is that if you have a right price, you will are you are willing to do anything. With any with the same thing with any industry, um, you are paying for a service. Right. And so um, it was just it was just interesting when she said that because when Gail was talking about that 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 there should be some level of morality within. Within, within, within that arena, within that realm. Um, Listen, pornography is the secret name, if you want to get religious, thank you for the call, is the secret name of the harlot who sits on the back of the beast in the book of Revelation. <laughs> harlot, porne, pornography, right? So why would we seek to have some type of moral compass in a business that's not predicated on that? And when did sexuality become immoral? Was it in the garden? Mm. Right? The, the, sometimes the religious beliefs are out of whack with reality. Somebody call in and talk to me about this. 877-2106-106. I mean, Kurt Franklin, right? One of the most religious, non-singingest, producing, hit-making wow. dudes in the world had a problem with pornography, the addiction to it, mm -hmm. right? But is his addiction induced by human nature? Or, his, or is his addiction induced by a religious dogma? Somebody call me, 877-2106-106. That's the number to dial. Do you know of a couple whose relationship is in trouble because of compulsive Internet use? Visiting porn sites. Somebody call me right now, 877-2106-106. That's the number to dial. Marcia from Texas, your time to holler. Hello. What up, Marcia? Hey, what's going on? I'm chilling. How you doing? I'm doing good. I just Talk wanted to, to make a comment on um, what I thought about the pornography, the different acts that they perform. In the mm -hmm. I mean, I watch pornography with my husband on occasion whenever we want to get in the mood. And, you know, whenever I do watch it, I see scenes, you know, where you see two, three, four guys with one woman. But my point is, why don't you ever see five, six, you know, women with one man? It's a double standard. And I feel like it's just a form of degradation, you know. I, I, that does exist, and, and I want to know, and, and thank you for calling, by the way, and I, I do want to know why your husband is, is picking up movies with five but wait a dudes minute. Wait. in it and Hold one on. chick. Hold on, let me, let me, let me, let me. And the reverse does exist. Let me back Marcia on this. The reverse exists in the sense that there is one dude with four or five girls, but he's having a great time, whereas the one woman is being pile drived to death by a gang of dudes. It's different. With a guy, it's like, hey, it's your turn. Doo -doo -doo. And while I'm with her, you can, you know, lick and bite and tickle or do whatever you want to do. <laughs> but with the girl, it's a penis in the mouth. It's a penis in the anus. It's a, a penis in the vagina. It's some other dude giggling on the side and waiting his turn. It's really just a, a cacophony of foolishness if you really look at it. Very jail-like. Yeah, a woman has to take on, to me, a lot more than a dude. A dude is, I'm in heaven. I've got uh, multiple women, and it's just me. But I think that you can turn that on its head as well, because I've shot scenes with a with a girl and multiple guys, and the whole thing was the woman 
was going to take on each guy and drain them. Like she, it was a challenge for so her. So she's it a was, succubus. She, she was she was actually the the protagonist, as it were. I got you it. know. I got so. She so there is that that power play on the other side as well. It's harder to find, surely, because it's harder to do. And wow. anything that's hard to do, we don't do. We don't mm. like to work hard. We're lazy. Wow, we ladies like and gentlemen, you're listening to the voice of reason, Zoe Williams. We got to take another quick break. Are you waging an internal moral war with yourself because of your unspoken love of pornographic material? You better call me. 877-2106106 is the number to dial. I got to take a quick break. The pros and cons, peaks and pitfalls of adult film star relationships and their effects on yours and mine. You better call me. 877-2106106. That's the number to dial. I'll be back. Ladies and gentlemen, Zoe Williams has returned. Zometheus Rising, Foxhole Radio, Sirius 106, XM 149. Tonight's topic, the pros and cons, peaks and pitfalls of adult film star relationships and their industry's effect on yours and mine. I want to welcome back all the new listeners who just tuned in. This is the most compelling relationship talk show radio show in the world. We have to push the envelope. Sometimes we add a little bit of humor just to get it going. But all of the topics are serious and thought-provoking. This is what we do. I'm Zoe Williams, the voice of reason. I'm here every Thursday at the Foxhole, and we get down just like this. So... We got more callers. I've got more questions. Can you imagine being raised by an adult film star? What would your childhood be like? And what happens when you come into the knowledge of what mommy or daddy does for a living? How did I, how can we afford these Jordans? And you stumble into the stash, and it's mama. What kind of sexual imprint is on you now? Somebody call me, 877-2106-106. Like I said, are you having a moral dilemma? Are you, are you, you know, is your relationship suffering because of your dependence, right, on pornographic material? They say porn operates on the same region of the brain that cocaine, heroin, and all of these other highly addictive drugs operate on the limbic system of the brain, right? And within the limbic system, there is the hippocampus. Where are your memories are? So what they're saying is, once you get locked into porn, the memory of those scenes continue to play out while you're in, you know, physical, sexual action with your woman. So really you're disconnected because you're thinking about that as opposed to really being connected to her. So there's no intimacy there. And they're saying, you know, it's a real problem for a lot of people. Now, the limbic system of the brain is the old portion of the brain, what they call the reptilian portion of the brain. And the new portion of the brain, the neocortex, is the reasoning rationale. And they're saying all addiction starts in the limbic system of the brain. So with that said, it turns into a compulsion, an instinctual compulsion. The limbic system deals with survival, avoidance of pain, pursuit of pleasure, <laughs> right? It, it, it deals with some basic you know primal drives and once you get porn locked into the system now the limbic system of the brain tries to take over the neocortex right and what they try to do is is teach people the functionality of the brain they say you have two brains you gotta use your your reasoning rational brain which is the neocortex to talk to the uh, you know like okay that's a um, that's a trigger right that's a urge right there and you have to acknowledge well uh, I got stimulated I got triggered and it's okay. I don't have to act on it. So what they're trying to do is teach people to develop their reasoning and rationale when urges manifest. Because if that portion of the brain is underdeveloped, they just act on the urges just like animals. See, that's what they're talking about when we're talking about addiction. And it isn't just porn. It's any kind of addiction. Let me go to callers. Wingfoot, Chicago, talk to me. Hey, how you doing, man? Hello? Yeah, brother, we here. <laughs> Hey, uh, first of all, I want to say I'm, uh, I like your show, and also I'm a fan of you, Duvall, and Johnny Duck, man. I watch your stuff. Thank, so you. I got, Thank you very I much. A, I got a couple of quick questions. Um, could you talk about behind the scenes that a lot of us don't get a chance to know about or see about when we do watch the movies? And uh, <laughs> also, I wanted to know, uh, why did you guys get involved with it? And talk, talk about the steps you took to, to, to uh, get to where you got to. Oh, well, as far as, like, the behind the scenes, like, my behind the scenes is consist of like this little crazy stuff, man. Not just picture taking, which you see with a lot of stuff, man. I catch like people doing crazy shit, man. You know, 
you know, crazy acts. So that's what my behind the scenes is about, man. That's what it's about. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes. It's kind of funny. Um, there's this one uh, story that I tell really quickly. This um, this girl uh, came to us. She was brand new. Uh, she was supposed to do an anal scene. And it, for those of you that don't know, normally before an anal scene, you take an enema, which is like a douche for your butt. And so I, uh, uh, she was like, yeah, I'm all with it. I do it all the time with my boyfriend. I was like, okay, great. It's going to be a great day. So I sit her in the makeup chair, and I sit a deuce next to her and an enema next to her. And I go and set up the lights or do something else. And I come back in about half an hour, and I notice that the douche is there, but the enema is empty. So I look, I look at it, pick it up, see if there's like a leak or something. And she looks at me, and she goes, oh, I drank that already. <gasps> like it was a Capri Sun wow. or a juice box. Wow. Wow. Thanks for the call, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just... <laughs> <laughs> let me let me tell you that the scene did not happen that day because she got the bubble guts. I bet. And yeah, she had the enema yeah. juice in her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we had a very shitty day that day. <laughs> That's what so, that was. And let, let me just say this too: pornography is about fantasy, right? And we get back mm -hmm. to the relationship aspect of it. If you're dating a person who is, you know, in the industry and you're not. Doesn't the, the fantasy die once you're with a person and this is my job now, as opposed to sitting on your couch and watching it on TV and it's playing into your fantasy, you're living with this person now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like there's no more fantasy, right? Well, I don't live with Johnny Depp. You know, I live with the person that Johnny Depp is when he's not Johnny Depp. But and no, it's different for you and Johnny because you guys are both in the industry. I'm talking about one person being in the industry mm -hmm. and then the other person not being in the industry. Because like, the relationship, the development of them have to be difficult with you, people that aren't in the industry. One would think that it would be more difficult for, two pe for one person to be in the industry and one person out. Mm -hmm. But... In my experience and you know my observation it's it's the same because the jealousies it's the everything that that is irrational about relationships about any relationship carries over whether there's two people in the industry or not. We could have met on set mm -hmm. you and I though mm -hmm. and I'm like, hey, my name is Diana by the way, my name is Diana. <laughs> Yeah, I keep saying it, Diana. <laughs> my, name is, my name is Diana. I'm going to suck your dick today. And you say, okay, that's great. And I suck it so good that you Don't say, look me in the eye when you say <laughs> it. I'm getting weak. <laughs> I, I'm, to the audience out there, I'm on my knees right now. Right. Um, so, you know, you, I suck it so good that at the end of the day, you're like, hey, uh, let's go to lunch. Let's do something, whatever. Things go as they go, and we end up being boyfriend and girlfriend, and I move in. And all of a sudden, when I move in, this trigger goes off in you. Now, we're still doing scenes. You met me mm. on a set, Okay. Go back to how you met me. Mm -hmm. Hey, my name's Diana. I'm a sucky dick. Now it's, it's I don't want you to work with ABC dude because he was looking at me funny. And I don't want to look, I don't want you to work with ABC dude over there because I think that you really come with him too much. So there, and so I, there is jealousy and you, you say, wow, this is very high school, man. It's a big high school. Yeah, it high really school, is. Y'all that are listening, that are in the industry, you know it's true. If you don't think it's true, call in. Shut up. And my thing is, you know, communication, man. You know, let it know from the break. Exactly. Right. And that's with anything. That's with swingers. Yeah. I mean, I uh, ran so, a swing club before me, I got into it. Let me just ask you this question. Have you ever directed a film with him in it? All the time. And you thought, he did something new with her. <laughs> you know what? No, I I will say this. He might be they, putting it down a little too good. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You never because okay, in your research, you've mm -hmm. seen uh, you know what he's working with and whatnot. You know, I don't want to well, deal I with that every night. I wasn't really gauging I, it. I'm I, you know I'm you know what I said? What did you say? It was a baseball bat or Billy Club? It's or, a Billy Club. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so like I said, you're familiar. <laughs> so you know, it's it's great for me because I am peripherally aware, like from the periphery. <laughs> <laughs> Look, There's I'm taking, a shadow I'm over there. I'm taking your words, what you said. Okay? I got it, no thanks. <laughs> but um, uh, so yeah, it's to me in my you know this is our world or whatever. I'm really fine with it. I don't know what I'm gonna do when he stops doing scenes because well, he he'll be, be at home. He go right, want to do jump on me and uh, every night. No, and it's so it's so ill how we met. I don't know if people know the history, but you know she met me doing scenes mm -hmm. she wow. used to shoot me well we had never done a scene together we had never I, yeah. done a scene together and i was the type of cat and to this day i'm like yo let me go ahead and get this money do what i gotta do and i'm out mm -hmm. another type of dude to hang around and i don't know maybe she saw something in that or whatever. well i thought he had a girlfriend because i'm like a girlfriend anybody who like, goes to the set 
does their thing, takes her shower, and leaves. And then the girl's asking, like, who was that masked man? And that was on and, some Zorro shit. Right, he right. He's, he's gone. I'm like, well, surely he's rushing home to his girlfriend. But he was actually rushing home to his Xbox. So, Hysterical. Which I, which I like because I'm like, okay, if I meet you at the club and we get together, I can't be mad when you say, girl, I'm going to the club. Okay, let me let me do yeah. this. Let me go to some more callers. Tony oh, St. No. Louis, talk to me. Hey, hey, how you doing there, Joe? What up, man? Hey, it it, it sounds like um, you know, your show is all about relationships and the people in the porn industry have some of the same relationship issues that the rest of us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh and and <laughs> communication being the number one deal. So and and as far as um porn things and, and how it can affect your relationship, I think uh, you know, I, I personally have dabbled in internet porn, and my wife wasn't happy about it. But one of the things that helped us was, well, if we both go to the porn store and pick something out together, mm -hmm. well, that helps with the experience because, mm -hmm. like uh, I think Diana's saying, her scenes are rated to towards storyline and things of that nature, whereas other scenes are just like, let's hit it and quit it. So if she's involved, with me and my wife, with the selection, She's going to be more involved with the movie, mm -hmm. and I think we both benefit from that. So right, right, right. I, I right. think it, I guess what I'm trying to say is, in, in my relationship, it was an issue, but once we discussed it and came to terms with it, now it's a plus because we don't do it every night, but when we do, it's something that I think we both you, look forward you guys to. do together. Right. Thank you for the call. I appreciate it. And what he talked about, I mean, what's the difference? Because the, what he talked about is an intimacy building practice. Mm -hmm. A lot of times intimacy building means we're doing this together. We are present on each other. Our focus is on each other. Right. Right. And a lot of times with sex, especially with men, we have a focus that says, I'm trying to get off. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we're like we, we're goal oriented <laughs> and the goal might not be inclusive of the person we're with. It's, Let me do this so I can get back to. You know, I, I need to I, I need to see LeBron make the decision. So let me squeeze this one off and then get to the decision. You know, so sometimes, you know, like I said, we're goal oriented. But if we start doing things collectively, like what is the difference between what he said, watching porn together as an intimacy builder, or then, you know, going to buy lingerie together for your girl? Like, hey, let me go with you and I'll pick something out that I want to see you in. Mm -hmm. That's an intimacy builder, too. But pornography it can turn into an addiction as opposed to going to buy some lingerie. Go ahead. Nah, I know couples that, you know, go buy porn together. Like, I even had guys, like, on the Facebook. They was like, yo, man, you know, my girl loves you, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we watch you together, this, that, and the third. I'm like, yo, that's a good feeling because a lot of times the chick is dictating the relationship. Let's be real here, fellas. You know, if you wasn't, you would be ducking and dodging. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're grown, man. You can't watch adult films. Why are you ducking and dodging? So obviously somebody's running that relationship. But I said that to say this. When you go together, you know, and you want to watch it together, you can build together. Right. Obviously, yeah, it's a but good see, move. if we go back to Gail Dines, she makes a great point. Originally, right, mm -hmm. pornography was used by clinicians and therapists Mm -hmm. as an intimacy builder but this is way back in the day right, when changed. the girls were way uglier exactly. right let's just the girls are really fine nowadays it's a whole different movement now back in the days one or two girls would pop out and be right. cute or whatever but back then it was more there was a little plot to it mm -hmm. and it wasn't as reckless as it is now so now when I say reckless, I mean the experimentation, all of the different things, like, like she said, the misogyny, you know, the, the, the abuse and all of that stuff. Now it's like we, this is not, you know, intimacy right. building stuff. This right. is, you know, dangerous and detrimental. Uh, I got to take one more break. You're listening to Zoe Williams, The Voice of Reason. This is a crazy, crazy topic. Got to take one more break. Again, pros and cons, pits and you know, peaks and pitfalls of adult film star relationships and their industry's effect on yours and mine. I'll be back. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. I'm getting to my callers. George from California, Warren from Texas, Brian from Chicago, Larry from Maryland. I'll see you in a second. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, Zoe Williams, the voice of reason, has returned. Uh, you were listening to a record by none other than John E. Depth. The song is called Fuck Me Like a Porn Star. How convenient. Wow. This dude is making records and everything. This is this show is off the chain right now. I'm just surprised that all of this stuff we're talking about is is so taboo. You know, sexuality is very taboo in America. 
you know, um, I said many years ago on uh, Black Men Revealed um, that uh, white people or white America, the white infrastructure or whatever, was negrophobic and negrophilia. They love us and hate us at the same time. Absolutely. And, you know, a negrophile is what they were calling, you know. Mm. They love us and they hate us at the same time. A negrophile and negrophobic. I also think that America is sexphobic, but also sex files as well. They love and hate sex at the same time. I mean, you have the conservative and you have the liberal, and there's everybody else in the middle somewhere, some degree of the, the two extremes. It's a crazy situation. It's one of the things that we're afraid to talk about right now but what I will back is Gail Dines author of Pornland how porn has hijacked our sexuality I do believe that sexism in general is a problem in America and when you take a medium like porn and then you add racism sexism and classism to it the imagery and the message that is produced from that could be potentially and I won't even say could be is very, very detrimental. George from California, let's talk. Hey, guys. What up, George? How you been? I'm alive and well. How are you? Uh, good. I have a question. Uh, I'm a white boy. <laughs> and uh, I hope you guys don't laugh at me, but... Uh, it's all right. It's all right, Whitey. Come on. <laughs> no, I just have a question. Um, I just want to ask your guest, uh, Gail. That, uh, Gail is gone. That was the oh, author... Geez. But we have Diana DeVoe here. Diana? Would you like to ask me something? I do. Okay. Um, I want to ask, uh, what's your thoughts about, uh, what's your thoughts about anal sex? Are you what into it, or are you down? Or? Well, first off, put the that? lube is down. This, is this a, you know, uh, I mean, is this a date, man? Can I get some dinner? I mean, you know. <laughs> um, I, myself, I, I don't like to watch it unless i know the girl's into it um i haven't uh uh for i've done one anal scene with johnny depp actually and that was enough for me um some women can absolutely orgasm from it i particularly cannot so you know i'm i'm cool okay let's move on from the <laughs> serial killer ted bundy calling in from okay. the grave warren from texas let's talk Warren? I just want to say, yeah, I just want to say, uh, I love your show, and uh, I agree with uh, Diana and uh, Mr. Depp there. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it, the pornography, man, really is all about choice. And you said earlier that. Okay, my brother is gone. Appreciate the call, oh. Brian from Chicago. Talk to me. Hey, glad to glad to get a chance to talk. There you go, brother. I've been I'm, I'm 50 years old. I've been watching porn for a while, and it's changed. And I think part of our our perception is we as a society are not open, not only to the fact that sexuality is there. It's, it's a fact of life. It's a part of life. It's something that we're never going to get away from. Mm -hmm. But we've also got to understand that we are all human, actors, producers, whatever. Our biggest problem right now, though, I think in the porn industry, and I'm not a part of the industry, but I say ours is, as a fan of it, is that it's still, and I hate to racially put it, but it's still mm -hmm. white. It's predominantly white. Right. right. And just like everything else, I hate to say it like this, but just like everything else in this country, country that's what colors our perception of it. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's true. I found, I found more people of color are more open to at least talking about it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say they are open to participating, but they're <laughs> open to talking about it. Right, right. Hey, uh, brother, I thank you for the call. I got to move on. We're, 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 no we're, we're, we're running it down now. But thank you for the call. Again, he makes a great point. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, I look at it like this. It seems like the black actors in the, in the industry are broke. Uh, you know, just seems like they they're not, all broke. It, I don't see a black Gina Jameson. There, you only see Jenna Jameson. Right, and what you kills me... You only see Tara Patrick. Right. There are like three women in the history of this thing mm -hmm. that have made millions within the industry. Right. Three. Right. You know, this is not a black problem or a white problem. There's 
Jenna Jameson and the rest of us. Right. And that's it, it. Because it seems like it seems like there's redemption for the Jenna Jamesons. There are, no, Whereas, but you keep saying Jenna Jamesons, and I really need you to get. Oh, just her. That there's means. Jenna Jameson. I got it. Okay. I got there's, it. You know, there's like, like I said, maybe three women who mm-hmm. have become millionaires. Right. And and that's it. not neither none of them are black, but I mean there's three of them. But that's so what I mean. Plenty of but this is, but this is what I mean about redemption. I think once they get to a certain level, a certain status, a certain level, they can say, well, now I I can leave that behind and then be rewelcomed back. As a matter of fact, right now, <laughs> exclusive, ladies and gentlemen, voice of reason, Foxhole Radio, Sirius 106 XM 149, none other than. Mr. Marcus is on the line. Mr. Marcus, talk to me, man. Yo, man, I'm sitting on the plane, man. I told you I'd call you when we touched down. <laughs> wow. Exactly. Dude, you missed. It has been a bonfire up in here. We've been talking you. about everything. We've been talking about a porn addiction. We've got Deanna DeVoe and Johnny Depp in the building. Say what's up to your people. What up, Marcus? What's How you good? doing? Why what are you up, always man? late, man? <laughs> what what what's with that man? I mean, re- really, the radio show, really? No, big That's ups good. on your book. Congratulations, congratulations. He has written a book. Uh, Marcus, yeah, really man, quickly, thanks. tell us what the name of your book is right now. Uh, it's called the Porn Star Guide to Great Sex. Wow. <laughs> and can where you can send we it get Doctor Gail Dines, please? And I'm on a plane saying that. <laughs> <laughs> so where can we where can we get the book really quickly? Uh, you can hit uh, Amazon.com, go to MrMarcus.com, Barnes & Noble, it's everywhere. Okay, so this is what I want to do right now. we got two callers on the line, and I want to be able to get them in. And if you want to chime in or answer some of their questions, could you do that? No problem. There we go. Larry, Marilyn, let's talk. Hey, how you doing? What up, man? First off, big fan of Marcus, Deb, and uh, the vote. No Thank you. Uh, Good the, the comment I had, though, was a lot of people fail to realize that most men, uh, we grew up used to multiple women. So then when you get in a relationship, you get that that, that uh, addiction out by using porn. You still feel like you're fulfilling some of that. And that helps, mm. I know that helps me from cheating. Wow. Mm. That's a really That's good point. Wow. Yeah, wow. True. Great point, man. I appreciate it. Mr. Yeah, Marcus. You know what? What's up? Yeah, yeah, I'm getting ready to say goodbye to you, brother. I appreciate the call, man. I got to bounce. Let me get back to Mr. Marcus. Mr. Marcus, a lot of people don't realize that you've been married for 16 years. Yeah, a lot, of, pe- a lot of people don't know. How did your relationship work? Was your wife jealous? How did it? How did that happen, man? Well, she's still jealous, and we still, you know, we got our days where. It's great, and there's days where it's, you know it's tough. It ain't easy because I'm always going to be Mr. Marcus. You know the porn star doesn't go away. Wow. So, so <laughs> it's a it's in other words, it's a process. You guys are still working through it. Oh yeah, yeah. I feel like I people always ask me about that, but I said there's no. I don't have an ending to it because it's still ongoing. You know, it's. I, but I, but I told her though. I said you know you got a bestseller in here. You know you got a bestseller in here. <laughs> let's go to Ike from Ohio. Ike, let's talk. I want to get on the money side of this. Everybody wants to bash the porn stars as far as the pornography goes, but porn feeds a lot of people. You know, they don't look at the person who packages, distributes. They're doing their part, too. Mm-hmm. You know, right. so... Why don't they look at those people as bad? Why are we just looking at the person in front of the scene? Because that's the only person that they see. We're you don't see the distributor. The yeah, we we doing the dirty kid. You you don't see the you don't see the producer. You don't see the director. You don't see the owner. You only see what's nah, they don't the see. They don't see the they don't see the UPS man picking nah, up. Nah, you don't see all that. <laughs> exactly, and it's funny because we put ourselves out on camera, and so we are going to be the target. But we're the wow. ones that make the least money in the process. Wow. I mean, wow. those of us that don't own our own product. Exploitation. Yeah. Wow. So, Mr. Marcus, talk to me really quickly, man. I, I want to ask you some of the questions that I asked Johnny Depp and uh, Diana DeVoe. Again, dude, why is the money structure so lopsided here? You know? Because Especially, it can well, be. You know what, though? Because I, I was thinking, I always compare things to mainstream and music and the entertainment industry, and I just think that there's the powers that be. They feel like they got to where they're at. They figured out the process, and then they just, what they do, they just put people in those places. And they put them at a at a at a minimum wage 
you know, environment, and they keep the process the machine working. This is a machine. And you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? Across the board in corporate America, Hollywood, entertainment, regular jobs, or whatever, that guy who you work for has the power to say, listen here, take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. And that power in and of itself is empowering to the person who wills it, but disempowering to the person that has to kneel to it. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in, it's you find yourself in that position. Exactly. And this goes back to your question, Johnny Depp, or your statement, Johnny Depp, of about uh, 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 choices. At some point, you got to say, what is being offered to me is beneath me. And a lot of, mm -hmm. I mean, unfortunately, yeah, just like Gail Dine said, a lot of people are in a situation where I got to get my rent paid. Yeah. Right. So if that means this white dude is gonna call me a, a stank nigga bitch and spit in my mouth, I'm mm -hmm. gonna take that. Yeah, take it. But what's the difference between I ain't that? Gonna take that but I yeah, the Ghetto <laughs> Gagger series, they do that. Yeah, that was oh, yeah, their choice. Yeah, okay. They made that. They, they <laughs> oh, do that. Yeah. They made but, that choice. But my question is, my question is, what is the difference between that woman in corporate America or that man in corporate mm -hmm. America who takes? the uh, uh, the equivalent of that you might not be getting spat on but it might be you got to take less money or it might be you getting demoted or it might be just a, a guy the, above you the difference is Steve Jobs himself did not sit there and build that iPhone it was somebody you know making whatever maybe he's even making three hundred thousand dollars a year fine but <laughs> well listen this is what I got to do I got to wrap this show man oh my god we could do another two hours of this I want to say Thank you, Mr. Marcus, for reaching out from your plane <laughs> as you're deboarding. I appreciate you, man, for landing and, and, and keeping your commitment to me. We're going to have to bring you back on another show. I appreciate it. Uh, Johnny Depp and Deanna DeVoe, I appreciate you guys for coming on and being so candid and sharing and, and dealing with my crazy questions. Again, porn, relationships, that's what we cover here. And we're not afraid of any topic, and we're not afraid to confront any topic this is what you're going to get from Zoe Williams, the voice of reason. I try to keep it on the edge, and I try to keep it informative. So if you want to reach out to me, email me at zo at Sirius-Radio.com. Follow me on Twitter, at Zoe Williams. Listen, I'm open to communicate. I'm open to converse, and I look forward to speaking to you guys next week. Zoe Williams is out. Peace.